Did you have it zoomed up two times? Um, I don't know. I could see the light work. Yeah, you can see the light work. Whoever came up with that, that's okay. Here, all right. Okay, so this is what we're going to do for homework this week. It has your reading, have your mother sign that you did it when you're done with it. Okay? Um, thought question. Write me a hundred word answer on which soil from the parables you feel like you are right now. That is the question. Okay, that is the question I want you to answer. I put in parentheses other questions to kind of get the creative juices rolling. Okay, you don't have to answer each specific question. Just answer the, the first question and go from there. Um, so the, the ideas to get you rolling are what would make you a healthier soil for the seeds being planted? Who are the people planting word of God seeds in your life? How should you be responding to them? And then I want you to find and write out three verses that tell us about God's character. Preferably not ones we use today, okay? But I want you to find three separate because I want you guys to practice handling the word of God and finding, finding information in the word of God, okay? So most Bibles have like a concordance in the back where you could look up like loving kindness and find those verses, or kindness, or um, just, or okay, so you can look those up. If you have questions about how to do that, come to me afterward and I will show you. Okay, all you have to do is print your 100 words and your verses on a piece of paper and then staple this one to the front. Okay, with your name on it. Sound good? Excellent. Then I have, I'm going to give you this. I'm just going to give you one because I hit print twice and have a whole pile of them. These are when you write me papers, these are information that needs to be in the papers. And we will go over it more in, I'm putting these here. Um, we will go over it more in real life when it applies to writing a paper. Okay? Um, but you can just put that in your three ring binder or tuck it in your stuff. Okay, so turn to Exodus. We're gonna be back there. So, yeah. So you're okay with handwritten? I'm okay with handwritten. Okay. If your handwriting is clear. No. <laughs> then, no. Jackson, that is a no for you. I don't know how to do it on the computer. Okay, yeah, you can do handwritten. I just have to be able to read it, you know? I'm sorry, where did you tell us to turn? Je Exodus. Jackson. 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 Exodus. 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 Go to, go to chapter 2. Okay. Moses, born 400 years after the people are in slavery. Give or take a few 50 years. Okay. So. They're in Egypt. Moses is born. He's born to an Israelite woman. Pharaoh had told the midwives, when you go help the Israelite women deliver their babies, if it's a boy, kill it. They didn't. They let them live. So the boys are in danger because the Pharaoh's afraid they're going to raise up against them and fight them and win and doesn't want to lose his kingdom. All right? So Moses is hidden away until he... They can't keep him quiet anymore, which couldn't have been too long because I have a son and it would be hard to keep him quiet all the time. Um, so Moses gets set adrift. You guys know this, right? I'm, I'm hoping he, he gets set adrift. Pharaoh's daughter finds him. He's raised by Pharaoh's daughter. Go to verse 11 of chapter 2. Now it came about in those days when Moses had grown up that he went out to his brethren and looked on their hard labors. Okay, so he knew. He went out and he saw them. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his brethren. So he looked this way and that, and when he saw there was no one around, he struck down the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Okay, so he murders a guy and hides him. This kind of goes along with the guys that God uses, right? People who have done things that 
are kind of frowned upon. Okay, so he hides him. Pharaoh finds out. Moses takes off. He's living in the land of Midian. Go to chapter 3. Now Moses was pastoring, verse 1, pastoring the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, yet the bush was not consumed. So Moses said, I must turn aside now and see this marvelous sight, why the bush is not burned up. Is this how properly you talk to yourself? <laughs> I must do this, right? Okay, so Moses turns aside, he sees this bush on fire, but not burning up. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. He said, here I am. Then he said, do not come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet. For the place on which you are standing is holy ground. God is so pure and merciful and all of the things, holy, that Moses can't even wear shoes. Can't. Let me just see. Okay? He tells Moses, take your shoes off. Because the place you're standing is holy ground. He said to him, I, and he said also, verse 6, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So this is how God identifies himself to Moses. It's been about 400 years, right? The Israelites were enslaved for 400 years, and he's still identifying himself as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Then Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Okay, what is our response? <laughs> our response to God's character. What is our response? What two things have we seen so far from Moses? Fear. Yeah, fear. Okay, fear. There's a action required, right? He says, take off your shoes. So an action. He feels unworthy. He feels unworthy. What does he do? The chapter, or verse 6. He hides his face. He hides his face. This is going to be super interesting later because later on in Exodus we read that Moses like converses with God face to face. Okay, that he hides his face in the presence of God's holiness, in the power of this God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. He goes, he hides his face. He was afraid to look at God. So God tells him, I've seen my people's affliction, I've heard their cry. It's time to do something about it. I'm going to do something about it. Um, verse 7, the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and I have given heed to their cry because of their taskmasters. For I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to deliver them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Amorite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Now behold, the cry of the sons of Israel has come to me. Furthermore, I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians are oppressing them. So he tells Moses, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh. Verse 11, but Moses said to God, who am I? that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt, okay? He's thinking of his past. 
I was raised by an Egyptian woman. I killed an Egyptian man and then hid his body in the sand. So I'm a murderer. Kind of feel like a traitor to my people because I, I wasn't raised in oppression. He was raised in the palace. Not as a slave with his family. He's looking at his past and going, who am I to do this? What on earth are you saying? Verse 12, and he said, certainly I will be with you. And this shall be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God at this mountain. Remember that. He's on Mount Horeb. And God says, you'll be back here with the people. Then Moses said to God, behold, I am going to the sons of Israel. Okay? He goes, Moses was like, okay, I'll go. And I will say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God tells Moses his name. He says, I am who I am. Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me. And this is the first time God gives his name. He no longer says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He says, I am. Now look what Moses does. <clears throat> Where'd it go? It disappeared. Okay, God furthermore, verse 15, said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial name to all generations. Okay. Weird. Basically, it just says, and Moses just hit the floor, right? Well, that's in the next part, right, too. Okay. Uh, Job 2, Genesis 32. 30. Yes. Okay, so God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. Now he says, I am. Okay, we're jumping out of sequence a little bit because we haven't read the entire book of Exodus. But Moses has led the people out of Israel. There's been the plagues. It's been all the things. They have gone through the Red Sea. They have... Um, traveled around in the wilderness, the people are griping, and Moses is a little bit tired of leading them, okay? Go to chapter 32, or, yeah, 32, verse 2. Genesis? Exodus. Exodus. Oh, okay. Sorry, 32, verse 32. Moses tells God, but now if you will forgive their sin... He says, forgive them, because they've, at this point, they've had the golden calf and all this stuff. He says, if not, if you won't forgive them, please blot me out from your book, which you have written. Moses goes, I'm tired of leading these people. If you're not willing to forgive them, just kill me and erase me, because I don't want to be involved. I'm tired of this. So go to Exodus 33, verse 18. Verse 14. And he says to Moses, this is God talking to Moses, he says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, Moses is saying to God, if your presence does not go with us, do not lead us up from here. Verse, eight, verse 17, the Lord said to Moses, I also will do this thing for which you have spoken, for you have found favor in my sight and I have known you by name. Then Moses says, I pray you, Show me your glory. And he said, I myself will make all my goodness pass before you. Okay, all of class has been leading up to this verse. Okay, we have God's character. We have kindness. We have loving, just, merciful, right? All of these things. We have the fact that God identified with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Now... He's identified himself as I am. 
Now Moses says, show me your glory. What a bold statement. What a bold thing for him to say. And look at what God responds. Verse 19, he said, I myself will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face. For no man can see my face and live. Can see me and live. Then the Lord said, behold, there's a place by me. You shall stand there on the rock. Okay, so God is telling Moses, I'm going to let all of my goodness pass before you. But you're going to just die. If you see my face. So there's a crack in the rock. Moses says, I'll, or God says, I'll hide you in the crack of the rock, in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand, and I will pass by. And once I've passed, once my face has passed, I will remove my hand, and you will see my back, and I will declare to you my glory, my character. <clears throat> Go to verse chapter 34. Verse 5. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood there with him as he called upon the name of the Lord. Then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God. Okay, so we have had. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, we have had I am. Those are the only names we have known God as. People have known his character qualities, but now God is going to proclaim to Moses who he is. He's going to tell Moses, this is who I am. Okay? If I were to say, Jackson, tell me your character. A little hard for you to do, right? You're like, how do I, how do I do that without sounding arrogant or too humble or, you know, super proud of who I am or all that? But God says, I'm going to tell you who I am. He says, the Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving kindness for thousands who forgives iniquity transgression and sin yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and on the grandchildren to the third and fourth generations so he goes this is who i am when i tell you i am this is what that is summing up and look at Moses' response. Verse 8. Moses made haste to bow low toward the earth and worship. Moses hit the floor in awe of who God is, in awe of God's character. Because God is loving and gracious, and yet he's just, he's this perfect balance of loving and justice, of graciousness and fair, right? All of these things. So we're going to unpack this. We're going to spend the next however many weeks it takes us unpacking God's character and looking at God's character because God's character, I think, is hugely defining what we believe. What we believe of God's character will define what soil we are, all right? I know somebody who was on fire for the Lord, excited about the Lord, all of a sudden came up with questions about God's character that are very, very answerable questions about God's character. And now he's going, 
yeah, God's character is flawed from my perspective because I can't, I can't make sense of this. So it's casting a shadow on God's character, so God must be flawed, so I'm not going to follow the Lord. And he was taken out by something so simple as not trusting God's character, as not knowing God's character. Okay, so I want you guys to think about this week. What are the silhouettes? What are the people? What are the circumstances? What are the things in your life that all of a sudden cast a shadow on God's character because of your perspective? This is my perspective. If I hand this light to Jackson, oh, all of a sudden God's character is fine. It's just me. It's my perspective of God's character. Okay? When in reality, what we have to do is read through a lens of God's character all of our situations. You have enough hands. All of our situations, if we, my light's not going to work. It's supposed to cast the shadow on there. That's what it's supposed to do, but it doesn't in real life. But if we read all of our circumstances through God's character, God's character isn't flawed. Okay? Two years ago, teaching this class, or the New Testament survey, I had somebody come to me on, on something that's kind of a little controversial, but because of their circumstance, they were saying the word of God is wrong because this is what I have experienced. God's character is wrong because I know better because my situation is hard. Right? That sounds pretty ridiculous. And yet we do it. Okay? I've done it. I don't feel like honoring my parents. They aren't always honorable. So, so God must be wrong because, I mean, his character has a shadow on it because of my thoughts. Right? We do that. Oh, I don't have to obey because what my parents are asking is ridiculous. Oh, I don't need to, I don't need to do this because, you know. When in reality, if you trust God's character and go, okay, it doesn't make sense to me right now, but I know it's not wrong, your soil will be good for growing. When I was in Bible college, my favorite teacher, not the dean of the college, but the one I really liked, his name was Pastor Al. Pastor Al told us one day, he's like, if ever you're reading your Bible and find something you disagree with, you're wrong. <laughs> and it was like, oh. But he's like, if, if you find something that you go, oh, that's wrong. You have to press in, you have to study it, you have to figure it out because you are the one who's wrong, all right? And that's what people do with God's character. They go, eh, God's wrong. And their little seed that has sprouted fizzles and dies because they don't know God's character. They don't understand that God is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness and truth. He keeps loving kindness for thousands who forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin. Yet, he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished. All right? Everything we're going to do in this class, everything we're going to study, all of the things we're going to work on in pressing into the Lord, we are reading through that lens of God being <clears throat> loving kindness gracious and merciful and just and all of those pieces because his character isn't flawed our perspective is if we disagree does that make sense okay we're gonna quit it's a little early but we're gonna quit because i'm done and i believe in stopping talking when you're done so let's pray lord thank you for today lord thank you for your word thank you for your character Lord, we are so grateful for who you are. Lord, I pray that you will help us submit and align ourselves to your word. 
Lord, if there's areas where we are struggling, Lord, that you will just soften our hearts toward you and submit us to you, Lord. Thank you for your character. Thank you for revealing to us who you are. Thank you for showing Moses your character and who you are so that we can reveal it later. Lord, I pray you give us wisdom this week as we look into your word, as we read, as we study. I pray that you speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, any questions? Any questions about class? Any questions about today? Any questions about homework? I will see you next week, and we'll go from there. Sound good? Do you have like a reading assignment? Or yes, it's on the. I didn't look for that. It's on the homework.